the BBC's view is that you, you c c should not mislead your viewers, particularly if they are children, and that this was uh, a very bad idea indeed. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 shocking children's show scandals. Hello, we're going to talk about playing today. Uh, playing with each other, Jeffrey. Yes, Bungle. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at controversies to hit British kids' shows and channels, but are focusing on more light-hearted ones. Let us know in the comments what your favourite CBBC or CITV show was. Number 10. Rainbow Goes X-Rated Rainbow oh, I can't get it in, Geoffrey. Well, you managed it last night, Bungle. Yes, I know. Well, 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 well let's try it the other way around. Oh, Jeffrey! Classic children's show Rainbow was on the air for 20 years, with large numbers of the British public growing up with it. Have you got a special friend that you like to play with? Jeffrey, yesterday we played with our balls, didn't we? Are we going to play with our friends' balls today? Yes! However, in the late 1970s, things got a bit out of hand, and a filthy episode full of double entendre and adult-only jokes was broadcast to children across across the nation, at least if you believe the stories. In reality, this isn't true. It was actually made for Thames TV's staff Christmas tape, never intended to be seen by external eyes. Have you seen Bungle's twanger? <laughs> oh, I have, yeah. I showed him how to pluck with it, yeah. Yes, it's my plucking instrument. But it ended up getting broadcast late at night on Channel 4 years later, and the myths that it was shown to thousands of innocent children began to circulate. It's still very funny, though. We could hear you all banging away. Banging can be fun. Yes, and I was banging away all last night with Rod and Roger. Yes, but it broke my plucking instrument. Number 9. Bob's Bad Language. Bob the Builder. In this old episode of Bob the Builder, Bob decides to step out of his comfort zone and offers to decorate a new flat he's built. I've told Mrs Broadbent that I'd decorate the new flat I built for her. You? But Bob! You're a builder, not a decorator. Though he's told by Wendy that he doesn't know the first thing about decorating, he tries anyway and spectacularly fails at putting up the wallpaper. Oh. Uh, my However, parents had some complaints about this episode because it sounded like Bob, frustrated with the wallpaper, started dropping F-bombs. <laughs> An investigation got underway and Neil Morrissey's master recordings were scrutinised to get to the bottom of it, but it turned out he wasn't swearing. It just sounded a bit like it. But, in fairness, putting up wallpaper isn't easy. Number 8. Tinky Winky Teletubbies We all heard the jokes in the playground about Tinky Winky's handbag. But did you know that this situation got so fraught that the original actor behind Tinky Winky left the role? Tinky Winky, Tinky Winky, Dipsy, la, 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 la. Ho. After months doing the job, Dave Thompson was removed by the BBC, who said that Thompson's, quote, interpretation of the role was not acceptable. Thompson himself said that the BBC didn't explain too much about why he was being sacked, but suspected it was because Tinky Winky was too effeminate. <laughs> yes, apparently somebody at the Beeb took all those comments about Tinky Winky's favourite toy to heart. Perhaps they thought it would be wrong to promote dangerous things like bags and purses to young children. <laughs> Number 7. Fireman Sam and the Quran. Fireman Sam. In 2016, the BBC got hit with over a thousand complaints about an episode of Fireman Sam. Ignoring the fact that Fireman Sam at this point aired on Channel 5, and all those people complained to the wrong channel, the issue was actually quite serious. In one episode, a firefighter slipped on a piece of paper that turned out to be a page from the Quran. Careful, Elvis. Don't worry, Sam. I won't slip! The show was accused of Islamophobia and the episode was immediately withdrawn and Mattel was forced to publicly apologise. Apparently, it was just supposed to show illegible text, but somebody at the animation studio put the Quran in there. 
It was later re-edited to be a blank page. I think I'd better get a new box. Oh. And I'll get a mop. Number six, Jungle Run After Dark, Naked Jungle. It certainly would be fun to take part in your favourite childhood game shows as an adult, but maybe not like this. Hello and one, welcome to The Naked Jungle, a show to celebrate the world of naturism. In 2000, ostensibly to celebrate naturism in the UK, Channel 5 decided to take over the set of CITV's Jungle Run for a bit and send a group of nudists around. They played on the same sets as the kids and did similar games, but they were in the buff the whole time. Why Keith Chagrin? Well, you see, it was a choice between Brad Pitt or me, and because I'm the nation's sex symbol, they chose me. <laughs> Though most people took Naked Jungle in their stride and thought it was quite fun, the Daily Mail was absolutely livid and tried to create a moral panic. Thomas is 24 and comes from Denmark. He's lived in Britain for the last five years and has always enjoyed taking his clothes off. Even members of Parliament ended up commenting on the row and host Keith Chegwin said he regretted it. Number five, news round gets cancelled. News round. Finally, this is the last time I'll be saying, and finally. And there's no funny story today because for me, this is a rather sad moment. In 2020, the BBC decided it was going to cancel news round. Not completely, as it still did morning bulletins that the broadcaster said were regularly shown in classrooms. But the 4 o'clock TV edition of Newsround on CBBC was no more. Now, you might have heard that Newsround is making some changes to so the way that we bring you the news each day. Newsround is a way to explain important current events to children in a way they can understand without being patronising, and was crucial in helping generations of British kids start learning about the world. It was sad to see the show, which did plenty of credible journalism despite its child-friendly mandate, fall by the wayside and get treated so poorly. Right, that's all for me for now, but Ricky will be back tomorrow morning at that new time of 7.45. We'll see you then. Bye. Number 4. Lavatory Gate. Dick and Dom in the bungalow. 15 tons of mushy peas and muck muck. Norris, Kakalak and Poopy Woo. We could fill a whole list with Dick and Dom's anarchic antics, as their chaotic weekend show was as infamous with adults as it was popular with kids. There was the Morning Wood incident where Dom was shown wearing a t-shirt that some thought was explicit, though he said referred to his name. They really loved us in the House of Commons. We had a weekly spot on points of view. And then there were Bogies, the beloved game that put terror into the hearts of museums and libraries everywhere. We danced in our pants and we kissed old bogies. We've been to museums and we shouted bogies! Eventually, it got the attention of politicians, one of whom called its humour lavatorial. This was dubbed Lavatory Gate by some press outlets, but was it a coincidence when, only a year later, the series ended? Number three. Socks vs Cookie, Blue Peter. Beware, here we go. When I press this button, we will reel the eighth Blue Peter kitten. Here we go. The suspense. Which is it going to be? It's, it's, gonna be... it's not Mabel who's going through shop. <laughs> it oh, is socks! socks! Who knew a cat could cause so much bother? In 2007, Blue Peter viewers were asked by the presenters to vote in an online poll for the name of their next Blue Peter cat. The top two options were Socks and Cookie. Socks was the frontrunner until there was a last-minute surge in votes for Cookie. Bosses suspected somebody may have rigged the poll and went with Socks. Until very late in the day, Socks was ahead and then there was a late surge for Cookie and the technical people thought maybe someone was trying to rig the vote. However, this caused a massive scandal, with Blue Peter accused of violating the trust of its young viewers, not helped by another voting and competition scandal earlier that same year. Someone got sacked? Presenters publicly apologised, and a new kitten was brought on and given the correct name. And the new set isn't the only new thing around here. Check out this little fella. This is our brand new kitten, Cookie. He's only 13 weeks old. Number two, Richard Bacon, Blue Peter. Yes, more from Blue Peter. This has since become one of the most notorious sacking incidents in television history. But uh, there was also some sad news. You'll uh, no doubt have heard that Richard is no longer on the programme. Yes, he agrees he had to leave and, like you, we are really going to miss him. Less than two years on from his debut in 1997, Bacon was sacked after the tabloids reported that he'd been taking Class A's. 
The story then got so out of control that some claimed Bacon had been caught doing lines off the back of the Blue Peter tortoises. The bit about the tortoises wasn't true, but the substance abuse was, and Bacon was let go. Do you remember uh, Fred and Frieda, the tortoises on Blue Peter? Yeah. Big white lines. Well, he gave them coke. <laughs> I didn't give any tall toys coke. He's dealt with his addiction since then, and has returned to the world of British entertainment, hosting many radio and television shows since the tortoise incident. Number one, no more kids TV. I can make my world come true. My world come All my dreams will see me. The era of iconic kids TV shows might be at an end in the 2020s, however, because it's been bad news all round for our favourite classic channels. The staff always do silly things at Saturday supper for the kids, so laugh makes everyone feel like one big happy family. What sort of silly things? In 2022, the BBC said that by 2025, both CBBC and BBC4 would be taken off air. And a year later, ITV announced the end of CITV as a terrestrial channel. Kids' offerings will move online in the case of both, but it's a sad day to see the end of British children's television as we know it. Oh! Are you the woman from next door? Yes. Maggie. No, I'm Sophie. <laughs> What's your name? It's Maggie. Oh, I see. As of 2021, an estimated 1.5 million UK households didn't have internet access, and with prices increasing all the time, huge numbers of children might suffer as these services go online. No, I was under the impression you were going to apologise. Me? Never. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.